Oh, I'm a little bit hungover because I went to the Cowley Road Carnival yesterday in Oxford. But that is fine. Uh, I also went into some charity shops and I got some stuff. So I'm going to show you these quickly because I got these records. This is uh, the Monty Python Instant Record Collection, uh, which is pretty cool. I don't really know how all this folds. Oh my god. How does this even... What is this? I don't understand what is going on here. I know this isn't bookish, but I thought I'd show you anyway. And I got this as well, Johnny Cash, Ring of Fire. Very cool. So those on vinyl. And then I also picked up some books. So I got The Story of Brexit, a Ladybird book. And this is by J.A. Hazley and J.P. Morris. Um, I've read like these ones before. These are like the Ladybird for adults. So for example, here we have, Tamara's company sends and receives information from all over the world. While the information passes through the company's British office, it is British information and free of interfering European restrictions. As soon as it leaves the building, it is tied up in red tape again. But it is nice that it is free for a while. Then I've got this, which is Stephen Fry and Hugh Laurie, a bit of Fry and Laurie. And this is literally like the uh, scripts for some of the different sketches they did with a few other bits and bobs thrown in as well. And uh, yeah, I think it's pretty cool because I'm a pretty big Fry and Laurie fan. So I didn't know this book existed and now I have it. I'm glad I have it. Then I also picked up Sleeping Beauties by Stephen King and Owen King. Um, I haven't, just haven't seen a copy of this in a charity shop yet, so I'm glad I have this one. This can be a nice chunky read for me. This is how many pages? 700 odd pages. So this probably, yeah, you can go with my little pile of chunky Stephen King books. And then finally, I got this in the post today, and I think it might be Agatha Christie. Specifically, I think it's one, two, a book on my shoe. I was correct. It is one to buckle my shoe. And this is a Hercule Poirot book. So yeah, cool. All right, hi, I have some books and stuff. I'm gonna show you this one first because I'm like halfway through it. It's a recipe book. And I always go through and pick out the recipes that I wanna try. And then actually I consider it read once I've read them all. So this is uh, Veg Every Day by Hugh Fernley Whittingstall. And uh, this was two for a pound when I got this. And I was originally thinking about reselling it, but I think I'm going to keep it and go through the recipes. Uh, I also got this little kid's book. This is The Ice Bear by Jackie Morris. And uh, there's no blurb or anything of this. It, I've already read it. It was quite hippie-ish um, and quite spiritual, which isn't really my thing. But I was fine with it. I, I still got my way through it. Uh, I also got Thomas Hardy, Test of the D'Urbervilles. And this is because I studied this at school. Um, but I don't own a copy and I try and keep a copy of every book I've ever read so I can literally put this straight on my red shelves uh, So that's good And then I have two more charity shop finds as well So here we have Mrs. McGinty's Dead by Agatha Christie This is a Poirot novel and actually for some reason this wasn't on my list of like books I want as well so I saw it and was like I remember Mara from books like Woe talking about this as well So I know it's like a legit book but for some reason it slipped by and so it wasn't on my wish list. So I rectified that and bought this as well. And then I also got this, which is T.S. Eliot, Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats. And uh, yeah, this was $1.99 and it's just beautiful. A little old favourite edition with these illustrations. So I am looking forward to this. The illustrated old possum, Nicholas Bentley drew the pictures. Lovely. Cool. This is going to be like a special haul. But also some of this footage is going to be in my monthly haul. So if you're watching this in my monthly haul, click the link below to see the full thing. Uh, I've received two very exciting packages. Uh, we're going to start with this one because I know what this one is. It's a big old one. This is uh, basically through my... Actually, it was through my Instagram, funnily enough. But um, I was contacted by the publisher of this book and they asked if I'd be interested in receiving a copy to either do a giveaway or post about it on Instagram. And as much as I love you guys, this is too nice to give away. This has like instantly become the crown of my collection. So this is by SP Books and this is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. And it's in this slip case. It's beautiful, isn't it? Look at this. And then we take it out of the slip case and what have we got inside so i just want to be very gentle with this 1000 copies of this limited edition have been printed on fedragoni avori paper avorio paper this book bears the number it does actually just have a dash of 1000 we have an editor's note and then basically 
it's the handwritten manuscript of Frankenstein, but then with the little, you know, additions and subtractions that uh, both Mary Shelley and Percy Shelley both put in. So you can see, for example, here on this one, you can see where the lines have been sort of crossed out and new bits have been added. And it's just this beautiful artifact. Look at it. And they do a bunch of different uh, books as well. So um, I was offered a choice of some of them. Some of the other ones they do, like they have Dracula as well, which looked fa uh, fantastic. Okay, here we go. In the same collection, we have uh, Jacques by Emile Zola, uh, Le, Bi Le Bible Historial by Guillaume de Moulin, The Great Gatsby, F. Scott Fitzgerald. We have some Jean Cocteau, Marcel Pagnol, uh, Al Cools by Guillaume Apollinaire. Jules Verne, La Tour de Monde on 80 jours. <laughs> I, was, I was doing well and then I realised I have no idea what 80 is in French and it's just a number here so I can't try and pronounce it. We've got Jane Eyre, Charlotte Bronte, uh, some more uh, Jean Cocteau actually, Victor Hugo, Notre Dame de Paris, Gustave Flaubert, Madame Bovary, uh, Alice Adventures Underground by Lewis Carroll, some Proust, Baudelaire, Voltaire, Jules Verne, yeah, loads of just you know, big hitters there. And as I say, they also have Dracula, which I thought looked cool as well. They are quite expensive, that's the only thing, but I mean, you're paying for quality, you know what I mean? So I'll link below to where you can learn more about these books. And uh, yeah, this has instantly become pretty much the, the highlight of my collection, you know? I can't wait to actually get some decent shelves up so I can so I can display it properly. I could get the two editions of Frankenstein. So there's like the published text and then Mary Shelley's original text as well, isn't there? And I could get both of these, those and then read those alongside this and sort of see the evolution of it. It's just beautiful. And you can see, I'm sure I'll hold it close up. You can probably see the quality of the, uh, the binding there. Beautiful, beautiful. So yeah, that is uh, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley from SP Books. Thank you very much for sending that to me. And as I say, I will link to that below. And then this is something else I was sent as well. I'll hold it this way around so you can't see the sender's name or address. But this is from Time for Books, who has a fantastic YouTube channel. I'll link to her channel below. She's one of my favorite uh, booktubers. She reads such a wide variety of stuff. She joins me and Todd for our monthly indie read along. She reads a little bit of horror here and there. Oh, she does some great collections as well. I mean, she's a big thrifter and also a collector. So uh, if you like to see like collections of you know, the same kinds of books, definitely check out her channel. Just check out her channel anyway, it's great. And uh, she, basically because it was my birthday recently, she asked me if she could have my address to send me something, so I gave her my address. I have no idea what this is. It is a parcel inside a parcel. I can show you this one, because this one doesn't have an address on it. And this is bubble wrapped, and I don't know what it is, but it, it looks awesome. I mean, it's gonna be a book of some kind, I imagine. Oh, let's see. What are these? I can already see they're like beautiful hardbacks. Oh, okay. So this here, this is sealed as well. Uh, this is Bare Bones, Conversations on Terror with Stephen King. Tim Underwood and Chuck Miller are the editors of this. So, uh, yeah. They smell nice as well. This is a beautiful little hardback. Oh, it's got some bookmarks in it as well, look. And then it does have some writing in it, which I don't even know what that says. Cool, so it's like a bunch of different interviews and stuff. That's actually really fascinating. Oh, here we go. Uh, this series of interviews was conducted from 1979 through 1987. Textual inconsistencies are inherent in such material and due to copyright restrictions, there is occasional duplication of content. Good, so there'll be some cool writing insights in this, I should, uh, I should hope. Cool little bookmarks as well, the flamingos. Look at all the flamingos. And then we have Paul Jenkins, Curiosity, uh, a redemptive myth for a mythless age. Clearly Paul Jenkins is a pseudonym for Lewis Carroll collaborating with Douglas Adams. That's cool because that's a quote from Mike Carey, who is also M.R. Carey, who wrote um, The Girl With All The Gifts that was cracking. Uh, I actually watched the movie of it recently. The book was better though. Um, and there's, he's also written The Boy On The Bridge. I actually interviewed him ages ago when I first started my book blog. I did a telephone interview with him. So that's cool. And uh, there's this little card here. Happy birthday. I live at the bottom of a hill and people just 
go crazy driving up there. And also, it's a really dangerous hill. Someone was coming down like that the other day and crashed into the, the corner of the... Anyway, happy birthday. Or, no, happy birth yay. <laughs> uh, another year older, you're wearing it well. If it wasn't your birthday, then no one could tell. Happy birthday, Dane. I have this little handwritten note as well. Uh, hey, Dane, I hope you are well. It is woefully late for your birthday. What date are we on? Yeah, it's over a month ago, but it's fine. <laughs> but I hope you enjoy these two books. Both reminded me of your reading taste. The Stephen King was an easy choice. As for the other book, the blurbs made me think you might enjoy it. Hopefully it'll be your first Dollar Tree book. Yeah, because she goes like thrifting at Dollar Tree and we don't have Dollar Tree in, in the UK. I'll have to send her some charity shop books and they could be her first charity shop books. Best wishes, your friend, time for books. She's put her name here as well, but I don't know whether I'm supposed to publicly reveal that or not. So I'm not going to do that. But yeah, that's awesome. Well, I mean, like I say, just literally just picking that up, that that quote from uh, M.R. Carey immediately makes me think this is going to be good. Plus, I mean, Curiosity is a decent enough title, isn't it? I'll read you the blurb of this one. I think that the Stephen King is uh, relatively self-explanatory. This guy's actually British as well. Paul Jenkins is a British-born comic writer who lives in Atlanta, Georgia. He began his career at Mirage Studios working on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I used to love that. Okay, so the blurb. Will Morgan is a creature of habit, a low-budget insurance detective who walks to and from work with the flow of one-way traffic. For Will, imagination is a thing of the distant past. When a job opportunity enters the picture in the form of the mysterious Mr. Dinsdale, curator of the slightly less than impressive Curiosity Museum, Will reluctantly accepts the task of finding a missing box of levity, the opposite of gravity. I like that. That's very Terry Pratchett. What he soon learns, however, is that there is another world out there, a world of magic we can see only by learning to unlook at things. And in this world, there are people who want to close the Curiosity Museum down. With the help of his eccentric new girlfriend, Lucy, Will will do everything he can to deliver on his promise to help Mr. Dinsdale keep the Curiosity Museum in business. Now that his eyes have been opened, he'll stop at nothing to keep the magic alive. A cross between Neil Gaiman's fantasy and Isabel Allende's magical realism, Curiosity is Paul Jenkins' impressive debut novel. Exciting, fast-paced and uncanny. A must-read. Wow, these do actually both sound awesome. That's super cool. Thank you very much. So yeah, there we have it. That's uh, it for this little special little haul video. Like I say, go down below and you can check out the links for the Mary Shelley Frankenstein and also look at the other titles they have. You can go and subscribe to Time for Books as well. In the meantime, thanks as always for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. I got a couple of packages in the post today. I think these are both the non-fiction business books that I do like these spark notes summaries of. Uh, unless I've ordered something and forgotten about it. So here we have John C. Maxwell, Failing Forward, Turning Mistakes into Stepping Stones for Success. And that one seems to be quite an old one, but I think it's quite well respected. So that's why I'm doing that one. And then here I've got this one, Emotional Intelligence 2.0. The world's most popular emotional intelligence test. Uh, Travis Bradbury and Gene Greaves. All right, it's book haul time. Uh, we'll start with this, which I got in the post from Wordery. So I think this is uh, one of the ones that I review for my client. Uh, yeah, Zone to Win, Organizing to Compete in an Age of Disruption by Jeffrey A. Moore. So I write these like 2,000 word summaries of these books. So that's very cool. And then the rest of these are all from charity shops. Uh, there are also a few records here. I went a bit mental. I finally got my TBR down to 146 and I've just ruined it by going back up again. Uh, we'll start with this. This is Penguin's Poems for Life, selected by Laura Barber. And uh, this is just one of the beautiful cloth bound editions. I got this for 50 pence. I'm actually, I'm going to attempt to sell it anyway for a profit. But uh, if it doesn't sell, that's fine. I will also quite happily read it. So yeah. Uh, I'll put that in my eBay store as well. I'll link below. What else we got? Here we have... Uh, so these are some singles. Dub Be Good To Me by Beats International. And this is The Tide Is High by Blondie. So these little tiny vinyls. And then I've got Carrot In Knots, which, which is Jasper Carrot, who's a, a, a comedian, I guess, from here in the UK. Who uh, He's actually from near where I grew up. So, yeah, I used to like Jasper Carrot back in the day. And then this, Orchestral Magic, which is, uh, it's got eight 
eight different vinyls in. It's got the uh, the great orchestras play their greatest hits in a classical mood. Great songs of the 30s. Great hits from great shows. The Oscar winners. The world's po great popular melodies. Great hits of the 60s and 70s and great popular waltzes. So uh, I'm going to listen to that a little bit of a, at a time. And that brings us on to the books. So here we have uh, Small Steps by Louis Sackar. So he wrote Holes. That's literally all I needed to know about this. And yeah, I picked it up. Again, these are all 50p or a pound, I think. We have Fellside by M.R. Carey. So I know he wrote The Girl With All The Gifts and I really enjoyed that. And I've been meaning to get to the rest of his stuff. I've actually been updating my wish list as well recently. And so a lot of these have like appeared on there. Here we have uh, David and Goliath by Malcolm Gladwell. Underdogs, Misfits and the Art of Battling Giants. So Gladwell's kind of like a businessy thought leader. Shout out to uh, Dom from Reading Fandom if he's watching. Because this seems like the kind of book he's probably already read to be honest. Here we have Students Go Vegan Cookbook by Carol Raymond. Uh, again, this was 50 pence, so I thought, why the hell not? I'll go through it and uh, pick out all the, the recipes that look good. I may also be starting up a YouTube channel for my cooking as well, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Here we have The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. So I've been watching the movies on Netflix with Bex. And she's read the books, and so she said I really ought to. And I kind of agree, I probably ought to. So um, I've started keeping my eyes peeled for them. To be honest, I reckon somewhere I'll see a box set of them. But uh, until the meantime, if I can get them as and when I see them, why not? And that's the first one as well, so that's good. And then we here, here we have Wide Saragosso Sea. Oh, so no, I can't pronounce it. Wide Saragosso Sea by Jean Rhys. Uh, a literary masterpiece inspired by Charlotte Bronte's Jane Eyre. And I've actually seen a few different people talking about this recently, but also I read uh, Gene Reese's Penguin Mini Modern when I was reading the box set. And so uh, I thought, why not? And speaking of box sets, finally I treated myself to these two beauties. So this was £5 and this was £6. So we'll start with this one. This is Terry Pratchett and Stephen Baxter. This is The Long Earth, The Long War, The Long Mars, The Long Utopia and The Long Cosmos. So, obviously, I'm a huge Pratchett fan. I, uh, he's my most read author. And I haven't read any of these. In fact, I haven't owned any of these until this point. So, um, yeah, it should be interesting to get to these. I've kind of been putting off reading them. But we will see. Now I've got them, I should have some inspiration. And then here we have C.S. Lewis, The Chronicles of Narnia. So we have The Magician's Nephew, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, The Horse and His Boy, Prince Caspian, The Voyage of the Dawn Treader, The Silver Chair, and The Last Battle. So, yeah. Happy days. And Bex, in fact, uh, she ended up getting two of these. So we came home with all three that they had in stock. Because I got one for me. She got one for her. And then she got one for like her niece, I think, as well. Or maybe a cousin, something like that. So yeah, that is where we're up to so far. As you can tell, I have bulked up my reading list. So yeah, those are all the books that I hauled in July. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books. And also if you want to do any buddy reads. And I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.